Homo Sasic. The best advice I've gotten about writing was just take the time to write. Do not try to make it pretty. Do not try to correct it. Don't care what comes out. Just write and don't overthink it. Just get started writing something. And by the time you're done writing, you'll look back and realize you've communicated the feelings or expressed what was inside of you. Welcome to another episode of Right of Your Life, where life happens and life storytelling transforms it. Our show is brought to you by lifestorytelling.com. And guess what? You don't have to be a writer to write your life stories. Lifestorytelling.com will teach you how. If you've been through hell and lived to tell about it, or your family skeletons are poking out of the closet, you'll want to check it out at lifestorytelling.com. Today's guest, Tom Ostasek, is a podcast host, a writer, and a former professional golfer. The author of two books, The Putting Assassin and The Men's Divorce Playbook, Tom credits the journaling process he learned while trying to improve his golf game with helping refine his writing skills to complete two books. And he has two more in process. Tom, I'm going to let you tell a little bit more about yourself and share how your journaling intersects with life storytelling. Well, thanks, Stacy. I appreciate you having me on your podcast. Sure. So, yes, my love of golf uh, transpired into me ultimately being a professional golfer for six years. And I started writing in a journal to uh, help me figure out how to improve and how to have more self-awareness and how to process things, both good and bad. You know, I, and truthfully, I that journaling, which I believe started just for golf purposes, I realized very quickly that it reflected my personal life and my personal issues and emotions and things I was dealing with. And so I inevitably had two journals, but quite often they were intertwined. And it's been a big part of my life ever like you said, ever since I was 17 and I'm now 36. Yikes. <laughs> I always enjoyed writing, especially when I was going through emotional challenges in relationships. I found, in fact, when I would look back and review some of my journals, typically they were about the negative or the the difficult things I I, I guess I, I could share with other people, but I found it therapeutic to write about and work through on my own and come to clarity and understanding. So it's, you know, like I said, it's something I've I've done my whole life. And I think it's probably helped refine my writing skills because I've gone on in this last year to write a couple of books. There's two other books that I've started as well. It's apparently a part of who I am. That's fabulous. Now, the two books that you've written, one is called The Putting Assassin. It's a golf book, correct? Correct. And the other one is The Men's Divorce Playbook. And you have, have written that through a lot of experience, right? Yeah. I. Um, uh, so, The Men's Divorce Playbook, I wrote about helping men cope with divorce. Mm -hmm. I've been through divorce. In fact, I was about three years removed from a divorce when one of my best friends was getting into a divorce. And so I inevitably was kind of reliving it through him or at least helping him go through it and realized right. that as I was helping other friends and men deal with divorce or relationships, I, I realized there was value in some of the things I was sharing with them. And, and if I could help them, maybe I could help more people than just those close to me and, and ultimately put together this book. Right. Let me go back to age 17. When, when did you first pick up a journal or what, what got you started journaling? Um, it, you know, I was obsessed with golf and it was, I, I don't remember the specific instance, but I knew I would do whatever it took for me to be a professional golfer. And a coach advised it. It started with mm. writing down things I was learning from a coach that I was taking lessons from. Around that time, I was an active reader, and I remember reading a book about somebody ultimately turning their journal into a book, and mm -hmm. maybe that thought kind of inspired it or at least encouraged it more. So tell me, what did yours look like, and where did you journal like on the golf course afterwards in the morning in the evenings um i it's a blue spiral notebook like you would okay. find in any high school back in the late 90s right and i would journal in the evenings typically i still have the journal in fact 
I, I can't even tell you the last time I picked it up, but I picked it up in the last couple of years and I was shocked at how inspiring it was to read and thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I was having these thoughts and these ideas. And because I did mention I wrote a lot about some of my struggles and challenges. Um, right. But I, I would read a lot of things that would be uplifting and motivating. And, you know, I, we talked ahead of, uh, before this about you being a self help junkie, and I am too. I was constantly yeah. reading books that would, in my mind, make me a better golfer, make me a better person, make me the best version of myself. And so I think I would take a lot of these thoughts and ideas and I would write them in my journal. And I've picked this thing up a couple of times and I've read through it. And I'm like, wow, how inspiring that I, I said these things or I felt these things. And I love so, it. Yeah. I, it's a prized possession. I will, I, like I said, I still have it. I think we'd all be surprised at the insight into 16 and 17 year old journals, you know, kids' journals, that when they're processing things, they do have a wisdom. Yeah. Basically, your 17-year-old self is talking to your 35, 36-year-old self, mm -hmm. right? When you journaled, did other people know you were journaling? Was it embarrassing to have a journal or not embarrassing? Or you? it was just a, a self-help thing? Nobody really knew that I was doing that. I think I shared it with my dad. I had a unique relationship with my dad at that age. 16, I moved across country to live with my dad um, mm -hmm. and really started over as a junior in high school and then mm. transferred my senior year to another high school and was the new kid again. So my junior oh, and senior tough. year, I was a new kid with not a lot of friends. But ultimately, this kind of goes to my obsession. I was doing it because of golf. Right. I had these goals. And when I moved to California, that was part of why I was moving was to pursue this goal and then I transferred schools because I realized this other school had more to offer for me to me along my journey of becoming a professional. And so I didn't really have friends that saw this. But ironically, here I am now coaching kids, high school kids, college mm -hmm. kids in golf, and I'm getting them to start journals, which, you know, some of them, are right. like, you know, some who are less committed or disciplined or aspire to much more, they really don't have an interest or a need to, to journal. But I do know there are a couple students of mine who have big dreams. And absolutely, the more I work with them, the more I'm going to make that demand on them that they need to start journaling. Have you continued to journal throughout your whole, you've obviously been through a very tough divorce. Did you journal through that time period as well? I did, actually. Interesting enough, and I'm just coming to this conclusion right now. Yes, I did. And I turned to my journal, which is no longer the spiral notebook. It's this nice leather bound journal. You know, I did write some, but if we're being completely honest, I journaled through some of my most challenging isolating, depressing moments or times when I was probably early 20s and figuring out life. And and I, I journaled through that. And honestly, I felt as though as difficult as my divorce was, I had enough self-awareness. I knew I, could, I was going to live through it because I, mm -hmm. in a sense, lived through worse. And I think right. part of that was the way I handled myself and, and dealt with challenging things and at an earlier age and and with that self-awareness and that experience i think it really helped me in in dealing with my divorce you've told me that journaling has brought about a heightened level of awareness for yourself and, and your surroundings tell me a little bit about that how does that do that for you well i'm somebody who thinks a lot and it's probably in some ways, that sounds, oh, well, good. He's very thoughtful. Well, no, I overthink and to, and sometimes get stuck. And journaling is a great way for me to kind of quiet my, my mind by one, I've now addressed these things and I've put them to paper and organize and, and get clarity. And so that helps my self awareness. If I realize, oh my gosh, I'm stuck in this rut and I'm starting to talk about it and I'm starting to work it out. Otherwise, it just, it's like a hamster in my head just spinning around. I'm not really getting anywhere, but through writing in a journal, I can see things in a slightly different perspective. Now that it's out on paper, it's expressed outwardly. It's like listening to yourself talk almost. Right, Which, right. This may be embarrassing, but I, I've been known to do from time to time. But, it, you know, it's it's <laughs> helpful. And and for me, the journaling is kind of a way of talking out loud yourself. And so it helps my self-awareness and it helps me kind of 
work through things and, and, and figure things out. And it's not necessarily that everything you write is absolutely all who you are. You're just processing some of those things, right? Oh, yeah. Putting them on for size and trying it out. Like, sure. Am I, do I feel angry or, if, you know, I'm an angry person? No, I'm just writing this out. Yeah. Get it out, get it done, and let's move on. That's true. Because I, right. I'm, not in, I'm not an aggressive person. I rarely express anger towards other people, but... You know, I will be honest with myself at times in my journal, and I think that's probably why I don't outwardly express it, Mm -hmm. you know, because I'm acknowledging it and dealing with that in my own little world of of journaling. I think humanity as a whole has a an incredible capacity for pulling the wool over its own eyes. I myself do that. You know, you don't imagine yourself thinking or doing these things, but yet you go through life kind of on autopilot sometimes Mm -hmm. and writing it down really helps with that self-awareness. Now, you say it also led to quicker improvements. Is that in golf? Yeah, I I think that's golf and relationships. You know, when you realize patterns are happening, when you're writing about the same thing, but yet different people. And and the other thing I, I guess I haven't expressed too is part of what I was writing about were my goals, my hopes, my dreams. Right. And when I do that or when anybody does that, it's like kind of planting a a red flag on that thought and it's you know it helps give you direction and I'm I'm writing that down and seeing that it there's there's power in that there's momentum in that and that was something that I did regularly which unfortunately I don't think a lot of people do so tell me when you journal today where are you at is it still a private thing in at the end of the day or well there's that's that's a good question I don't do it quite as regularly as I did when I felt like my life was more in turmoil. Like I said, I, mm-hmm. I went to it when it was a struggle. In fact, I, I spent probably a month trying this. I was getting up early and I was writing in my journal. Uh, it was kind of like a gratitude journal. So I was starting my day writing down the things I was grateful for uh, yesterday, the things I'm grateful for today, the things that made yesterday amazing, the things that I could do today to make today amazing. That was a uh, a neat practice. I, I enjoyed that. It's kind of a discipline thing too of of going through that effort. Putting things in your own handwriting has a. I've come to this conclusion: a different level of your mind, your body, like kind of reacts differently to your actual handwriting. In fact, I this may be along similar lines, but I've also taken to taking a dry erase marker and writing on a mirror. Uh, some of uh-huh. my goals. And and that to me, it's powerful to see my own handwriting, but then I'm also looking myself in the eye as I'm writing down the things I'm going to do or want to accomplish. And so I, I think there's a tremendous value in seeing your own handwriting, kind of taking it one step further and doing it in a mirror. So you have to look yourself in the eye kind of a thing like, okay, I'm, you know, it, it just another level of it sinking in. But on another note, I do write, it's not journaling per se, but it's in the sense of wanting to share with others. Like the books I've written, I've I've started a couple others and they've been very personal books. One is uh, I've started on co-parenting. I'm super grateful and for the relationship I have with my ex-wife in the sense of how well we co-parent. And I've had a number of people tell me you should write a book. And by about the 10th time I heard it, I was like, you know what? I've started writing. I should write a book. book. (laughs) (laughs) So um, I've I've been writing about that. Well, I haven't written lately about that, but I'm also writing a book to help inspire others and kind of, yeah, ultimately I, I love to inspire others. I have a name for it and I have an idea, but it's really just getting started. And the name of the book that I have for it is called Pushing Off from the Bottom. And ultimately, it's about some of the struggles in my life and other people's lives of where when life looks like it's the worst and the most challenging, you get through it and you look back and you're thank. And for me, I've been thankful for those times because it's brought about the most growth, the most clarity, and I'm the person I am today because of those scenarios. So that's kind of the inspiration for the book. So in a way, it kind of is like journaling, but for me, it's actually typing out to share with somebody else. Right. I know that you recommend journaling and you are a mental performance coach Mm -hmm. to lots of folks in golf and sports and life. 
but a lot of people don't really consider themselves or they struggle to consider themselves as a writer or haven't thought very much about writing about their lives at all. What advice would you give them? Well, advice about writing about your life or whatever you're experiencing, whether it's journaling, tell yourself, no one's going to read this. I can just write whatever I want and just get started writing. And it might not be about anything. It might just be about, oh, I've got soccer practice this afternoon, or I got to pick up the kids from school at the, and, and just start the process right? and commit to it for a certain amount of time. Like, okay, I'm going to spend my mornings I'm going to give it 15, 20 minutes and I'm just going to, I'm going to write what I'm grateful for or just pick something and commit to it. Probably some of the best advice I got about writing was just commit to, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write 2,500 words in a day or in this sitting and not care what I write. It, it just needs to be written. I'm not going to review it. I'm not going to make sure it sounds good. I'm not going to make sure everything's spelled and my grammar is good. No, none of that matters. All that matters is getting out these thoughts, these feelings, whatever it is you're 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 trying to uh, express without judgment, without critique. And I've heard of people taking off the backspace key out of their keyboard just so yes, you can't I've heard go that. back. And so. I, the first day I practiced that, I think my father sent me an article about, you know, goals or now that you're a writer, here's, you know, how you avoid writer's block or whatever it was. And I just remember <laughs> them saying, just decide you're going to write 2,500 words today. And I remember another buddy telling me about this, you know, don't worry about making it pretty. And those two things I applied and I just, I was shocked. I looked up and I'd written 3,500 words and I'm like, oh, well, that wasn't that bad. And then I, I went back and I read it. Yeah, it was a little bit, you know, it needed some work. But I, I realized ultimately I, it was like inspired thought. And I was like, ooh, this, this, there's something to this. And I did it again the next day. And um, so I, my best advice would just be don't be critical of what you're doing. Just commit to doing it and commit to the time and and just write. Right. Just committing to anything like that is the first step. And even if it's just five minutes, sure. there's actually studies done. That if you just start that without the judgment, and that's the hard part, without the judgment, after a while, the really good stuff starts coming mm-hmm. out. The really important things, your brain gets all those, hey, I don't know what I'm writing about. I don't know why I'm writing. You can even write that out or if you're typing, type that out. After all of that junk is left and you're still writing, that's really the good stuff. Yeah, I agree with that. What's one thing that you are really excited about in your writing or your business right now? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram. It's basically just my name, Tom Ostasek. And that's O S T A S I K. We'll also have those those links in the show notes. If you're interested in uh, any of my books, there we talked about the Men's Divorce Playbook. You can go to the Men's Divorce Playbook dot com. The other book I wrote, The Putting Assassin, uh, was the first book I wrote, and basically it was to to see if I could write a book, and it was something I I know a lot about being a professional golfer, and you can find it on Kindle. But ultimately, it was me proving to myself I, you know, I could, I can make my own book, and uh, right. it's, uh, it was fun to write, and I've, I've gotten some good feedback from that. So if you're a golfer out there, it's basically a, a golf, a fun golf psychology book. So and that's Putting Assassin. Both those books, the Putting Assassin and the Men's Divorce Playbook, those are on Amazon. Yeah, they're on Amazon Kindle. Um, if you're not a Kindle user, the Men's Divorce Playbook you can get from the website in in the form of an ebook. And that's mensdivorceplaybook.com. Correct. And then I've got pages set up for that community as well on Facebook and Twitter. Excellent. And we'll put all of those in our show notes so you can have access to those. And Tom, thank you so much. I appreciate you spending time with us today and and talking about journaling and how that's helped you in both the professional life and your personal life as well. And I'm really excited to share your information with our listeners. Well, thanks, Stacey. Appreciate you having me on and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Great information from Tom Ostasek. At the end of each episode, 
I peek into the Life Story Toolkit and share information on one particular tool that you might consider using if you're writing or would like to start writing about your life. The Life Story Toolkit is sponsored by LifeStorytelling.com, where you can find your life theme, discover where to start writing, and craft your life into a compelling story. This episode's Life Story Toolkit features a software tool called Keep Writing. This software is at keepwriting.boxjar.com and we'll put the links in the show notes. It's a word processor that works like an old school typewriter. It doesn't let you delete. If you really, really have to, you can type over mistakes just like a real typewriter. The idea is that this will let you focus on productivity instead of endless polishing and on reaching your word count goals. It simply encourages you to keep writing. That's all we have for today, except for one thing. I've got some extra special good news this week. I got married to a most wonderful man and changed my name. So you'll see it as Stacy Brookman from here on out. I've definitely put him through the psychopath test, and I'm happy to say he passed with flying colors. He's pretty special. In an upcoming episode, I share the story of my past and why that was necessary. Hopefully, my story will give someone hope that there is abundant life after traumatic times. In our last episode, Kathy Nelson discussed some really practical tips for organizing and telling stories with your photos. So if you have lots of photos in disarray, you might want to go back and have a listen. Next episode, we'll interview Kim Saeed, who helps people recover from narcissistic abuse. Be sure to check out the show notes on every single episode because we've got some free resource downloads not typically mentioned in the show at rightofyourlife.com. We love interacting with our listeners on social media. We're on Pinterest, Facebook, and just about anywhere you can hold a great virtual conversation. Our handle is Right of Your Life. Some of our listeners like supporting the arts. If you do too and want to support this podcast, you can do so by sharing each episode on your social networks and you can head over to our special page at patreon.com slash right of your life and become a patron. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash right of your life. Both of these help us reach many more people who could benefit from writing about their lives. We hope that today you have the right of your life.